Introduction Meditation is defined as the act of concentrated focus for the purpose of increasing awareness, promoting relaxation, and or to enhance personal and spiritual growth. Meditation can include physical, emotional, and mental exercises. It is purposeful and deliberate. In other words, meditation doesn't just happen by accident. The good news, however, is that basic meditation is not difficult and offers a number of benefits. A healthier diet and lifestyle, a stronger sense of self-worth and a sense of purpose in your life being the main ones. The purpose of this book is to introduce you to the basic practices of meditation and to teach you to use each one effectively for optimal results. By taking a few minutes out of each day to meditate, you will notice a number of positive changes in your life. Like most every other discipline, though, meditation takes practice, and with practice will come perfection. Perfection to the extent that you will be a happier, healthier you, more in tune to your physical, emotional, and mental self. Throughout the pages of this book, we will be delving deeper into the meditation practices of organic living, yoga, relaxation, and a few other important topics. But it won't be enough to merely read the words on the page. You will only benefit from what you read when you put it into practice. Meditation. Meditation Handbook Guide. A Meditation for Beginners book. Written by Sam Siv. Narrated by Darren Roebuck. Disclaimer. This information is not presented by a medical practitioner and is for educational and informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you might have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have read or heard. The History of Meditation Meditation has been practiced by various cultures for thousands of years, dating back to ancient times. Proof has been found in Indian artifacts dating back 5,000 years of the history of meditation called Tantra. Historical research also suggests that hunters and gatherers practiced meditation in its different forms in order to perform their duties to the fullest. But like most other cultural and religious practices, meditation has changed and evolved to become what it is today. One of the major figures in history of meditation is Buddha. The Buddha is also known as one of the biggest meditation icons since 500 BC. History shows that meditation practices of other countries and cultures have adopted many different forms of meditation and have created or developed their own unique practices. But that the Asian practices of Buddha are at the root of them all in some way or another. It is also worth noting that meditation was widely practiced in Eastern world societies for hundreds of years before making its way west. In fact, it wasn't until the mid-20th century that meditation finally started to gain popularity in the West. To that point, meditation was thought to be mystic and paganistic. Even after making its way West, meditation was still viewed by many as being out there. But when researchers and doctors in the 1960s and 70s discovered the benefits meditation had to offer, the practice of meditation began to receive more positive attention. People finally began to understand and believe in the merits of meditation. As you are about to discover, meditation is a practice that helps people achieve mental, emotional, and physical balance. It is even used to treat depression, stress, and anxiety, sleep disorders, and metabolic imbalance. The deep rest a person achieves through meditation can rid them of a number of physical and emotional problems, ultimately enabling them to achieve personal success and happiness. People have successfully used meditation to lose weight, 
stop smoking, curb overspending, lower their blood pressure, overcome eating disorders and alcohol abuse, and a number of other positive life changes. Meditation has proven through the centuries to heal the mind and body using that very same mind and body. Today, meditation is widely practiced on a number of levels, ranging from the most basic of yoga exercises to meditation including self-hypnosis. Some people consider meditation to be daily quiet times of reflection, prayer, confidence-building exercises, and or relaxing in solitude for the purpose of clearing your mind, relieving stress. Others take it to a much deeper level by participating in intense yoga, breathing, and the study and usage of chakras, auras, and kundalini. You can practice meditation in the comfort of your own home or become involved in a local meditation group. There are also a number of tools and options for making meditation personally suited to you and your needs. No matter which forms of meditation you choose to practice, you can be sure of this. Meditation will alter your life for the better. Introduction Meditation is defined as the act of concentrated focus for the purpose of increasing awareness, promoting relaxation, and or to enhance personal and spiritual growth. Meditation can include physical, emotional, and mental exercises. It is purposeful and deliberate. In other words, meditation doesn't just happen by accident. The good news, however, is that basic meditation is not difficult and offers a number of benefits, a healthier diet and lifestyle, a stronger sense of self-worth and a sense of purpose in your life being the main ones. The purpose of this book is to introduce you to the basic practices of meditation and to teach you to use each one effectively for optimal results. By taking a few minutes out of each day to meditate, you will notice a number of positive changes in your life. Like most every other discipline, though, meditation takes practice, and with practice will come perfection. Perfection to the extent that you will be a happier, healthier you, more in tune to your physical, emotional, and mental self. Throughout the pages of this book, we will be delving deeper into the meditation practices of organic living, yoga, relaxation, and a few other important topics. But it won't be enough to merely read the words on the page. You will only benefit from what you read when you put it into practice. Organic living and meditation are key to positive self-development. Organic living means to have a diet free of any artificial products including fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, and preservatives. Only those made solely from vegetable or animal matter are acceptable. Some people take organic living even further by wearing only natural fibers like cotton and wool and use only natural cleaning, laundry products, and lawn care products. It's not easy these days to adopt an organic lifestyle due to a. the lack of accessibility some people may have to organic products, b. the cost of organic products, c a reluctance to give up foods you enjoy, d, a lack of cooperation on the part of your family to adopt an organic lifestyle. So if it's so much trouble, you say, why bother? Organic living cleanses your body's systems and removes the fog from your mind. Our bodies are designed to function on plant and animal matter, not artificial products. So when our bodies are being fueled properly, they function properly. And when they function properly, we are able to think more clearly and rationally and process our emotions more evenly, both of which are part of the meditation process. Now that you know what organic living is and why organic living is fundamental to meditation, let's look at how to make organic living a part of your meditation practices. Society makes it unnatural to eat naturally 
meaning we've become so accustomed to instant, pre-cooked, chemical-laden foods that we consider organic foods strange, even faddish. It is easy to understand why organic isn't the norm. City and urban dwellers don't have the capabilities to grow their own food meaning the food that is trucked into grocery stores has to be treated to be able to make the trip and still have a shelf life. There's also the fact that people are in such a hurry to live life these days that they don't want to stop long enough to fix healthy foods to eat. Think about it. What does it say about a society who can buy pre-packaged hard-boiled eggs without the shell? All those preservatives clog your body and mind as much or more than the busyness you use as an excuse for needing non-organic foods. But in order to truly be able to meditate or focus on your body for the purpose of bringing about positive changes, eating clean and living a clean organic lifestyle must be a part of the process. It actually becomes part of the process by just deciding and concentrating on making changes to become more or completely organic in your lifestyle. And like other meditation practices, it is a process. You won't likely embrace an organic lifestyle overnight. Neither will you see the results overnight, results that include a better digestive system, better sleep patterns, enhanced mental clarity, improved circulation, clearer skin, and overall improved health and organ function. Now let's go back and break that down into smaller pieces to develop a plan by which you can begin meditating on the advantages of organic living and focus on thinking and living this way. Diet. Think about what you eat. How much of what you eat is fresh, free of chemicals and preservatives? Do you eat a healthy diet which gives you the proper amount of servings from each food group each day? If your diet is severely off track, don't despair. Meditate on changing it one meal at a time. Meditate on how you can make breakfast organic. Concentrate on changing that meal, and that meal only, until it is something that comes naturally to you. Then move on to the next, and then the next. Does your fluid intake consist mainly of water or of processed sugar-laden drinks? Note, even healthy juices often contain large amounts of sugar so be mindful of what you are drinking. Meditate on drinking more water. Clean living. You don't have to throw away the cleaning, laundry, and household supplies in your house that are not organic. For most of us, trying to replace these things all at once would be hard on the budget. Simply focus on replacing them as they are used up. The result of meditating toward organic eating and living is that you feel better. And as you feel better, you are in the development state of meditation, removing obstacles that stand in the way of clearer, more positive thinking. Remember, meditation is a process that guides your mind and body toward a more relaxed, positive state. This is not to say you will never experience stress, fear, or uncertainty, but by knowing how to control your thoughts channeling them in a more positive direction, meditating gives you control of your life over these negative influences rather than them controlling you. Tips for living naturally or organically. Visit your local farmers markets and buy from local growers who practice natural and or organic farming. Grow your own foods to the extent possible. Create a computer file or Pinterest board of recipes using healthy foods and household products. Cook from scratch. You will be able to enjoy most of your favorite foods if you make them from scratch instead of buying pre-made, pre-packaged versions which contain preservatives. Use natural sweeteners like honey and maple syrup instead of sugar. Meditation for self-control and self-development. When you have control of your emotions and feelings, you are better able to control other areas of your life, specifically how you allow people and incidents to affect you. If, however, you do not have self-control, 
negative thoughts subconsciously take over, causing physical, emotional, and mental upheaval in your life. Is there really any question, then, that self-control is something we should all be striving for? Meditation is all about self-control, controlling oneself to focus on more positive things and attitudes. Meditation is a means by which you can safely and effectively search your heart and soul to connect with your deepest desires. It is finding and exposing your true self in order to live life in such a way that you reach your full potential. This happens when you meditate on the positive by thinking positive thoughts, see the good in everyone and every situation. Instead of viewing mistakes and failures are nothing more than mistakes and failures, you view them as lessons in how not to do something the next time. When you meditate on the positive, you are also giving yourself the freedom to forgive yourself and others and experience the emotional weightlessness that comes from doing so. Find your inner self. While this term may sound like a cliché from the 60s, there is really quite a bit of truth to the belief that we all have an inner self. It is the part of you we call our personality or character. It is what drives you to be you. Meditation reconnects you with your inner self. I use the term reconnect because as children we are all very much in touch with our inner self. We express ourselves freely and naively without worrying about what others might think. To find your inner self, you need to admit or discover what your strongest character traits are and meditate, focus, on using these traits to help you establish a better sense of self-control. When you do, you make better decisions, have less stress in your life, sleep better, enjoy better physical health, and have healthier relationships. You should also take a few moments to write down the things you would like to change about yourself and your life, things, people, or situations that are holding you back from having the self-control you are striving for. Be honest with yourself, but at the same time, don't be too hard on yourself. Once you've made your list, meditate daily on making those changes in the right way at the right time. Be goal-oriented. Call it a bucket list, a life plan, or just a list of goals. But whatever you call it, create a list of things you want to accomplish, both short and long term. Like the list of changes you wish to make in yourself, meditate on accomplishing each goal you set in a reasonable amount of time. If you are a more fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants kind of person who doesn't believe in setting goals because you think they will tie you down, this may be something that takes a while to develop in your quest to become one who practices meditation. If so, you may be better off not setting any other goal than to meditate for 20 minutes a day. Hey, some people don't do well with that type of structure, and that is all right. We are individuals and are all unique in our own way. Just be careful to not let your meditation time become nothing more than a time to dream but never fulfill those dreams. And then there are those people who are naturally task and detail oriented. These people don't need to create a list of goals. They have these lists embedded in their brain. Their lists are what keep them going each and every day. They thrive on making mental lists along with mental check marks they can make in their mind as each goal is met. If this is you, that's great. You will see amazing changes in your life as a result of meditation and your naturally focused personality type. But beware. People with this type of personality run the risk of turning meditation into just one more thing to do. Don't let that be you, or otherwise meditation will not produce the results you are seeking. Relax. Yes, it really is possible to relax no matter how busy you are, what life situation you are in, and no matter who or what tries to convince you that there is no time for you to relax. Relaxation is an essential part of meditating, dealing with negativity and stress in a positive manner rather than letting these things control your attitude. Relaxing your mind and body allow you to attain self-control, 
come to know your inner self and are focused enough to be goal-oriented and goal-achieving. Relaxation is almost always a combination of mind and body. Physical exercises send signals to the brain to be calm, happy, and make good decisions, feel great about yourself, and so much more. While some people find relaxation in hobbies such as sports, walking, running, woodworking, gardening, and other such things, no exercise or hobby is quite as effective as yoga when it comes to training your body to relax while teaching your mind to meditate. As we've already discovered, yoga is a form of exercise based on stretching and positional movements for the purpose of better health, enhanced mental and spiritual clarity, and self-control. The words tranquility and spirituality are also commonly associated with yoga. No matter what your spiritual beliefs are, however, yoga is an excellent way to train yourself to meditate and reap the benefits of meditation. Learning yoga is relatively easy to learn and has varied levels of intensity, so it is something literally anyone can do, no matter your age, gender, or physical condition. You can learn yoga in the privacy of your own home via books, the internet or DVDs, or you can choose to work out with a group in a class or gym or even with a personal trainer. Are you beginning to understand that meditation isn't a single act, but rather a group of actions along with the mindset of being in control of your thoughts and emotions for the purpose of a better life? Imagine a straight line. Now ask yourself, what does the straight line make you think of? For a young lady named Marcy, that line represented happiness. Marcy was abandoned at the door of an orphanage in a remote and poverty-stricken area of Eastern Europe. She was severely malnourished and was thought to be about a year old. Six months after arriving, she was highly functional from a physical standpoint, but was displaying signs of emotional and mental disabilities. About that same time, a family from America arrived to take the daughter they had adopted from the same orphanage home with them. While there, they saw Marcy and were captivated by her winning smile and big bright eyes. When they inquired about her, they were told she was completely healthy except a heart murmur. Fast forward almost a year later, the couple from America couldn't get Marcy out of their hearts and minds so decided to see if she were available for adoption as well. She was, so the paperwork was set into motion. When they arrived back at the orphanage, it was a year and a half to the day that they had left the first time with their daughter Hannah. They were expecting a bigger but similar Marcy to what they had seen before. What they saw, however, was a child with obvious behavioral and mental disorders. But because they already loved her and had committed to giving her a forever family, Marcy made the trip to America. But as it turned out, that journey was nothing compared to the one she was about to take. The first surprise was that after being examined by a doctor, it was determined that Marcy was six, not three. Next, they were told to put her in a home and forget about her, that her disabilities were too severe. That was not even an option. And so they persisted, until they found a doctor who would see Marcy as a child worth caring about and helping. The day they knew they had found such a doctor was the day this particular doctor asked Marcy to tell him how she felt. Marcy looked at him, held out her finger, and drew a jagged line in the air. As she did, she said, I feel like this, but I want to feel like this, and then drew a straight line in the air. While Marcy's many problems do require the use of some prescription medications, the doctor showed Marcy and her mother how to use breathing and simple yoga poses to help Marcy feel like the straight line you were focusing on earlier. Let it do the same for you. Hypnosis and Meditation Stress, it's a killer, sir, said Bartok the Bat in the children's movie Anastasia. Animated or not, the bat knew what he was talking about. Stress is both a physical and emotional crippler and can even lead to death through heart attacks, strokes, and even suicide. How sad is that? 
The good news is that you have the power to kick stress to the curb through meditation. By spending time each day meditating for the purposes of believing in yourself, exhibiting self-control, and having goals you are working towards, you will automatically reduce the level of stress in your life and the way it affects you. For some, meditation to deal with stress can include hypnosis. Hypnosis is not a trance-inducing event like you've seen portrayed on television and in the movies of years gone by. Hypnosis doesn't require someone to swing an object in front of our face instructing you to get sleepy, get very, very sleepy. Hypnosis is the act of creating an extremely heightened awareness and focus in someone for the purpose of changing mental and physical behaviors. Hypnosis can be done by psychologists trained in doing so, but it should be noted that hypnosis does not work for everyone, meaning not everyone can be hypnotized. That being said, there are a number of books, websites, and audio resources, CDs and online videos, that, when used correctly, can put you in a heightened state of relaxation and awareness described as self-hypnosis. The benefits of this type of meditative practice allows you to conquer fear and the confidence to make changes you might not otherwise be able to make. Guided Relaxation and Meditation Guiding or teaching your body and mind to relax will help you meditate freely. With guided relaxation, you will learn skills that will allow you to relax, to relieve stress, reach goals, gain success, and make better decisions. Here's how. Music. Soft, soothing music with a gentle rhythm puts you in a relaxed mood, conducive to meditating. The genre doesn't necessarily matter as long as it is soothing and gentle. Now I know there are some saying you relax when listening to hard rock, rap, or loud instrumental tunes. This type of music may be good for getting household chores done or keeping you in the mood to run or work out in the gym. You really cannot relax and let your body release the tension and stress it is holding on to unless you provide a soothing, calm atmosphere for that to take place. For the sake of your meditative practice, give it a chance to work for you. Listen to soft, soothing music of nature sounds and let them work their magic on your mood and attitude. Quiet and Alone Find a place that is quiet where you can be alone. The beach, a wooded area, a candlelit room in your house, an open field, in your backyard flower garden. It doesn't matter where, as long as you are alone and undisturbed. Note, choosing a place outdoors is usually best, but for those plagued with severe allergies, or if you live somewhere being outdoors is not possible on a daily basis, some place indoors will suffice. Once you are in your quiet place and your music is playing, lay down on your back with hands and feet out straight. You can also choose to recline either on the floor with pillows or in a chair made to recline. Next, using your imagination, think about where you would like to be and what you would like to be doing. If you could be anywhere, where would it be? If you could be doing anything, what would you be doing? Envision this taking place. When you are there, begin focusing on one part of your body at a time. Start at your toes and working up. Focus on fully relaxing each part of your body to the point of feeling a floating sensation. As you begin to relax, your body will feel strange tingling or numbing sensations. That's okay. This is just your body's way of letting go of the stress bottled up inside. Aside from these special times of meditation and relaxation, you also need to create a generally relaxed mood in your home, a calming screensaver, a clean house, pleasant scents in your home, house plants that remove toxins and allergens from the air, soft lighting, soft music rather than blaring television shows and video games. You get the picture. Stop premature aging through meditation. Potions and lotions and creams, oh my. 
How much money do you spend each year on products for the purpose of reducing the signs of aging? That much, huh? Did you know you can reduce the signs of aging by meditating regularly? You can. Meditation enables you to reduce stress, regenerate healthy cells, and keep your body functioning optimally, to name just a few. Think about it. How many times have you been told that frowning creates wrinkles, or that squinting will give you crow's feet? And doesn't stress cause gray hairs to appear on your head? Stress has even been linked to hair loss. What about your skin tone, bone density, abdominal bloating, and water retention? Aren't those things linked to a poor diet? Yes, they are, and they all make you look older. Have you ever felt like you were twice your age when you crawl out of bed in the morning or try to keep up with your kids at the park? The muscle toning and flexibility you get from meditative yoga works to prevent these signs and symptoms of premature aging. Using meditation to stop you from aging prematurely is a win-win situation. Not only does it work, but it costs less and makes you feel better from the inside out rather than superficially as the case with commercial products. Also, as we age, we sometimes tell ourselves, or have others tell us, that we are too old to do this or that. While this might be true if you are 50 and wanting to wear a mini skirt and midriff top, age shouldn't keep you from accomplishing anything. Remember, you are only as young or old as you feel. Meditation will push those negative thoughts out of your mind giving you the freedom and permission to do things that will make you happy. It doesn't matter how old you are. Success and happiness is yours if you believe it and think positively. And you can learn to think positively by practicing meditation and focus on self-confidence and self-improvement. Setting Your Meditation Goals Meditation is a discipline that requires commitment on your part, commitment and desire. Once you have decided to make regular meditation a part of your day, a part of your lifestyle, you will need to set short and long-term goals for developing your meditation habits. Without goals, we wander aimlessly, blaming everyone and everything else for our unrest and unhappiness. Goals boost our ambitions and give us focus and a purpose. Meditating on these goals allows us to have the energy, stamina, and confidence to achieve our goals. To help you achieve your goals, make a list of what they are. Put meditation at the top of the list. Learning to meditate and relax isn't always easy, but it can be done. And when you do, you will sleep better, feel better, think more clearly, act and react more rationally, and be more confident and sure of who you are and what you are doing. Other goals you might want to consider include yoga and other physical exercise, forgiving those who have wronged you, loving yourself, being at peace with your body but working to make it physically fit, eating a healthy and organic diet, saying no to people and things that are detrimental to your well-being, pursuing those things that you are passionate about. Once you've listed your goals, you will use the relaxation and meditation techniques we've covered music, quiet and solitary time, hypnosis, positive thinking, to achieve these goals for the purpose of living a happier, healthier life. What goals do you have for life? Do you have any goals for your life? Why not start now in making small personal goals that will enhance your life? You deserve it whether you think you do or not. Don't worry, we will take it slow and easy so you don't feel overwhelmed and set yourself up to fail by taking on more than you are ready for. Look at each of the following and write down one goal you would like to achieve sometime within the next month for each of them. Change your diet. A friendship that is not beneficial to your self-confidence. A problem at work. Something that needs to be fixed around the house. Someone you need to apologize to. A book you want to read. A project you need to finish. A habit you want to be rid of. 
Someone you want to contact. Learning a new skill. Do you see? Setting goals is part of practicing meditation. By setting goals, you will be focusing on accomplishing something. You will use meditation to imagine yourself doing these things and experience the feeling through imagination that you get from accomplishing your goals. This, in turn, fuels your drive to actually achieve them and realize your potential for success and happiness. Using Affirmatives in Meditation for Self-Improvement Have you ever started something but failed to see it through to the end? Have you ever said or heard someone say they cannot do something or be the person they want to be because no one will help them get there? Have you ever been guilty of procrastination or unorganized planning? These behaviors indicate a lack of using affirmatives in your life. Affirmatives are statements and beliefs to confirm your belief that what you say or intend to do will happen. For example, if you say you plan to meditate for 20 minutes a day, you will affirm this statement by setting the time aside in your schedule ahead of time instead of saying you will get to it when you can. Another example of an affirmative is to back up the desire to change your eating habits by clearing your kitchen of foods that are filled with chemicals and preservatives. People who fail to use affirmatives are usually people who have not been held to task in the past, from childhood even. They are the people whose parents repeatedly said, if you don't stop, I'm going to, but never did. They are, as the examples above show, procrastinators and those who fail to take responsibility for their own thoughts and actions. To help get you to incorporate affirmatives into your meditation exercises, take a few minutes to get comfortable, or start getting comfortable, with the one of the most important affirmations of all, the one that says you like, love who you see when you look in the mirror. To love yourself is essential and contrary to what some might say. It is not selfish to love yourself. Think about it. The golden rule says to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, meaning to treat others the way you want to be treated. And since it is safe to assume we all want to be treated with love, respect, dignity, and genuine sincerity, we can also safely assume it is acceptable to like ourselves. The Bible also says to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Again, this indicates that it is permissible, even expected, that you love yourself so that you will know how to demonstrate love to others. To accomplish this, start each day by greeting yourself in the mirror by saying, I love myself enough to want to be the best me possible. I am beautiful and my beauty comes from my heart not from a shelf or from the opinions of others. Additionally, when you get the chance throughout the day, walk by a mirror or view your reflection in various services and smile at yourself. Practicing these affirmations of self will encourage and inspire you to view life from a standpoint of living affirmatively. So as you prepare to commit to meditation and relaxation, Take a few moments to look back over your goals and make some affirmative statements and actions to solidify your intentions. Examples of these include To affirm my goal to lose 5 pounds in the next 6 weeks, I will eat only fresh fruits for breakfast. To affirm my goal to quit smoking, I will keep a glass of water within reach at all times to distract me. To affirm my decision to spend less, I will carry only cash to cover my expenses. To affirm my goal to get the proper amount of sleep each night, I will remove the television from the bedroom. To affirm my goal to become a more positive thinking person, I will place inspiring quotes throughout my house and on my desk to inspire me. To affirm my goal to enjoy my life instead of simply rushing through each day, I am going to give up two activities that take me away from the people and things that matter most to me. 
to affirm my goal, to fulfill my life's dream of fill in the blank. I will devote a few hours a week to the pursuit of this dream. Are you beginning to grasp this concept? Great. Now spend some time focusing on making affirmations appropriate and relevant to your life situations. Use your imagination. Your imagination is the place you go in your head to find peace and serenity. For this reason, using your imagination to help you meditate is a positive step to becoming a happier, healthier, and more focused you. As you go through the steps of relaxing, use your imagination to go to a safe place, a beautiful place, a place where your world is just as you want it to be. As you relax, use your imagination to help you release each part of your body from itself to become totally free of the stress put upon it from a number of different sources. This isn't to suggest you create a make-believe world that could never exist. Say your own personal land of Oz or Never Never Land. No, the purpose of using your imagination is to take you to a point of believing that it is possible to be happy, healthy, and successful when you create an environment conducive to being just that. To help you get an idea of what this feels like, Imagine yourself standing on a beautiful island. Picture in the backdrop a lovely waterfall spilling macrobiotic splashes to the streams below its creation. Move to visualize the waterfall sending you a message. The message may be sounds of nature transmitting signals to your body and mind. Take in the messages by listening and hearing what nature has to say to you. Use your visualization skills to practice meditation for self-improvement. Along with imagination comes visualization. Visualization works to help you meditate by allowing you to form images in your mind's eye to develop new ideas, remove negativity from your life, and visualize your goals as complete. By visualizing what you want your life to be and who you want to be as a person, emotionally, mentally, and physically, you will find it easier to meditate on becoming just that person. The mental picture you create gives life, so to speak, to your meditation and focus. Visualizing it makes it all the more real to you. Now let's go back to the exercise described in an earlier paragraph, the one instructing you to imagine yourself on a beautiful island. Take a few minutes to visualize the island. See the tropical flowers and fruits, the waves washing up on the sand, birds and the trees rustling in the wind. Not only are you imagining what it would be like to be there, you actually see where you want to go in your mind. As you are lying quietly, imagining and visualizing what it would be like to relax in this setting, your body will begin to tingle and or feel limp and detached. Don't let these sensations scare you. Go with them. They are signals from your body that you are releasing tension and stress. As this happens, you will find yourself feeling stronger, healthier, and more at ease with life in general. You will feel this way because by meditating in this manner, you are gaining a new awareness, connection, and appreciation for your body, soul, and mind. It is important to remember that when using your imagination and visualization techniques in meditation, that you remove, prejudi that you remove prejudices and angry thoughts from your mind. Do not allow your mind to go to unsafe and unwelcome places. This isn't going to be easy, and it will take time. The human mind tends to take the other road when allowed to wander. We what-if potential problems and play the game called worst-case scenario. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can break the cycle by practicing these disciplines for a few minutes every day. It is also important to remember that even when you are able to create your own aura of serenity to live in and conduct life from, 
much of the world around you won't be doing the same. Now, while that is sad and unfortunate for them, it does not have to take away from what you are doing. Imagining a place where all is good and right in the world will in turn give you the strength, desire, and drive to work toward making the immediate world around you as pleasant as possible. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like someone who is successful and in tune to who they really are. And isn't it great to know that that person is you? Are you a bit skeptical? Or is your life so complicated that you don't think you can do this? Think again. Or at least give it a try by taking five minutes to paint a mental picture of one of the following and imagine what you would be like if you were there. A snow-capped mountain with a log cabin, a cozy bed with warm quilts, a fire in the fireplace, and good food to eat. You can wrap yourself in a blanket and sit outside on the covered porch to breathe in the crisp, cold air when you want to take a break from writing your next best-selling book. You are sitting outside on your natural stone patio. The flower beds you tend so carefully are in full bloom all around. The love of your life comes to sit down beside you, and you watch the sunset together, and watch as the lightning bugs twinkle all around you. Lying in your tent, you hear a stream rushing over the rocks. You picture a leaf here and there, falling into the water only to sail down the stream toward places unknown. Before you know it, it's morning and you wake to smell coffee brewing over the embers of last night's fire. You are submerged up to your neck in a steamy, relaxing bath, with the scents of lavender and mint wafting all around you. The candlelight is flickering all around, reflecting off the walls in the mirror. You focus on the dancing flames, letting your thoughts take you to your goal of recapturing the romance and intimacy in your marriage by imagining various romantic date nights you want to create for the two of you. By taking yourself to one of these or your own special imaginary place, you will create an environment free of anything that will hinder you from focusing fully on meditation and relaxation. Word Association in Meditation for Self-Improvement Word associations allow you to recall information that guides you to the development of new ideas, including the practice of meditation. Many people use word association to help them remember facts and figures. For example, to remember that the Union Army was the Northern Army during the Civil War, people will say the Union Army was the army wishing to remain in part of the United States. The word association here being Union and United. Let's practice a word association by taking a look at the word personality. Just look at the word for a minute. As you focus on the word, ask yourself what a personality is. It is a group of character traits that make you noticeable to others. Your personality would be defined by adjectives people would use to describe you. Next, begin to think about your own personality. What words would you use to describe yourself? What words would you like to be able to use to describe yourself? Finally, Think of something or someone in your life you can associate with those words you want to be able to use to describe yourself. By using word associations like these, you will be able to meditate and focus on making the changes in your personality you wish to make. You can also use word association to make decisions that lead to your personal success. To help you understand this, look at the following group of words loyal, trust, dependable, sincere, honest. What do all of these words have in common? They are all character traits. They are all positive character traits. They are all character traits we should strive to have. They are all character traits we desire to see exhibited by the people we have any sort of relationship with. To use this word association for your benefit in meditation, you would meditate and focus on 
the fact that this is the person you are aspiring to be. The fact that you should only allow people with these qualities to be an influence in your life. Now you try. Write down a group of four or five words associated with the goal you wish to meditate on achieving. Associate these words with words to describe your personality. Next, you need to imagine and visualize yourself having met this goal while using some or all of the relaxation techniques we've discussed to remove any doubts and negativity from your mind and body that will prevent you from becoming what you want to be and achieving what you wish to achieve. Here are some word groups to help get you started. Family Home Real Neighborhood Job Career Dream Passion Money Debt Freedom Budget Meditation encourages you to follow your dreams. Children are to be admired and respected when it comes to dreaming big for life. Think about it. How many times have you heard a child say, When I grow up, I want to. How many times did you say that that very thing? How many times did you say that very thing when you were a child? More importantly, how well did you listen to yourself? How good of a job did you do at following that dream? When we follow our dreams, we are, in a way, meditating without even thinking about it. We are focusing on being in control of our life by making the decisions that will be the most fulfilling to us. We imagine and visualize ourselves doing what makes us feel complete. Now what could be wrong with that? Nothing, really. The problem is that few people have the courage to really follow their dreams. Elizabeth knew from the day she found out she was going to be a big sister again that she wanted to be a nurse, a nurse who cared for newborn babies and their mothers. Elizabeth was only nine years old at the time, but that did not matter. As the years went by, Elizabeth's dream did not change. When it came time to apply for colleges, she visited only those with strong nursing programs and chose the one she felt was best for her. Nineteen years later, Elizabeth has been an RN for six and a half years. She has cared for premature and critically ill babies and helped mothers bring their babies into the world. Elizabeth followed her dream, and as a result, she focuses or meditates daily on being the best nurse she can be. Not unlike Elizabeth, Nathaniel felt a strong pull toward being a mortician, being about the time he turned 14 or 15. While this sounds a bit odd or unusual, his reasoning was sound. You see, Nate's best friend lost his parents in a car accident, and the people at the funeral home expected Nate's friend to make decisions and answer questions he wasn't capable of answering or making. Nate didn't think anyone should have to go through that when they'd lost someone they loved. But a mortician? He could hear it now. He would be the laughingstock of the entire school and his parents were convinced he would make a great businessman, or more specifically, a banker or investor. He knew he'd never survive the business world, so he told everyone he wanted to be a chef. He did like to cook, but he couldn't see himself doing it for a living. Nevertheless, he enrolled in culinary school but dropped out after the first year. From there, he tried a number of different jobs, and even went to school for a semester to major in business. Finally, after five or six years of floundering around avoiding his dream, he went for it. He became a licensed mortician and embalmer. Today, Nate couldn't be happier. He is helping families through the most difficult times of their lives with compassion, professionalism, and sincerity. What's more, Nate is happy, healthy, content, and lives a relatively stress-free life because he finally allowed himself to focus on the life he imagined for himself and make it a reality. It's fair to say that not all childhood dreams should become a reality or have any chance of becoming a reality. Let's face it, a six-year-old little girl dreaming of growing up to be a mermaid isn't going to be able to see that one through. Likewise, 
Few teenage boys are going to make it to the NFL, and even fewer teenage girls are going to be modeling on the runways of Milan. So as you begin to meditate and explore what your life's dreams are, make sure they are reality-based and something you can actually visualize yourself doing. Once that is done, start meditating and working to make those dreams come true. Tracking your progress. When you were born, your parents begin tracking your development almost immediately. Your first smile, the first time you slept through the night and rolled over. And let's not forget those monumental milestones of crawling, talking, and walking. The primary purpose of tracking these events in your parents' eyes is to record your developmental history for posterity's sake. But your pediatrician marks these events for the purpose of making sure you are developmentally on track for what is known to be normal child development. Tracking your life doesn't stop with your infancy and toddlerhood, though. Grade cards, job evaluations, and even your bank statement tracks your progress in various areas of your life. Keeping track of our life's experiences is one way we mature and grow. This includes keeping track of your progress when it comes to meditation. By keeping track or taking regular assessments of the steps you are taking to become a happier, healthier, and more focused person through meditation and relaxation, you will be more apt to strive toward meeting the goals you set for yourself. Like your physiological growth, your mind grows in a similar way. Your brain demands food, exercise, and avoidance of unhealthy practices so that it can develop successfully. When you allow harmful things into your body and mind, things like misconstrued beliefs, twisted opinions, violence, illicit sex, alcoholism, and addictions to drugs, gambling, porn, or other vices, you allow these things to take up residence in your subliminal mind. When they do, your mind and body will somehow use what you have retained by coming out in your habits, behaviors, and personality. Read that last sentence again, will you? Read it carefully. When they do, your mind and body will somehow use what you have retained by coming out in your habits, behaviors, and personality. Do you understand what it is saying? It is saying that we live what we see and hear to some extent or another good, bad, or indifferent. This means that each of us has the power to force the negative and harmful thoughts and feelings out using meditation and relaxation. We were not created for these things that abuse our body and corrupt our mind. Meditation is the way to take back control of your life. Stop listening for a few minutes and make a list of the negative influences in your life. Beside each one, Make a few notes on how these things have influenced your decision-making, your personality, your relationships, and your character. Lastly, write down what you want to replace each of these negative influences with and begin meditating on each of them. Lisa is naturally goal-oriented. Making lists and marking off each item as it gets done is as normal as breathing to her. The problems come when someone or something prevents her from marking off the things she believes need to be marked off in a day. Lisa is so goal-oriented that she misses out on some of life's greatest pleasures. For example, Lisa was so focused on completing her list in the order it was written that she refused to double back across town to make her son's peewee league soccer game after being detained in traffic on the way to the bank. As a result, she missed seeing him make his first goal ever, something she will never get back again. From the outside looking in, anyone would agree that Lisa messed up. She allowed her obsession with staying on task to keep her from what was really important. That is not what tracing your progress is about in the practice of meditation. Tracking your progress through meditation is about growing in your ability to disarm the negative influences in your life that keep you from reaching your full potential of being the real you. It is about realizing and acknowledging the progress you are making in listening to your inner self to be as successful and happy as you can and deserve to be. 
But don't stop there. Track your progress in adopting an organic and clean diet and lifestyle, using yoga, visualizing and using imagery during relaxation and meditation. Track your progress of how time spent meditating is enhancing your relationships, your overall health, your job performance, and the pursuit of your dreams. Yoga Quota for Self-Improvement and Enhanced Meditation Yoga is a type of calisthenics, or a self-developing tool. Yogic practices often assist one to rule various prospects of their mind and body which occurs from meditation. Yoga quota systems help people to battle common diseases by becoming aware of their actions, behaviors, habits, etc., and then control of their central nervous systems, brain, physiological states, etc. Enjoying yoga practices on a regular scale will give you a boost in self-development, which the effects you will notice the changes. You will feel renewed and confident by practicing yogic meditation. For yoga to be as effective as possible, let's take a more thorough look at what yoga really is and does. Yoga reduces stress. The reduction of stress promotes the human sensory apparatus system in a positive way. Yogic practices, when used properly, is a great strategy that helps one resolve many of life's pressures. Yoga combines spirituality, exercise, practical thinking and breathing for the purpose of being physically, emotionally, and mentally healthy. Yoga is a form of physical exercise. Yoga requires you to bend, stretch, and flex to work your core, arms, legs, and other muscles in your body. A major difference between yoga and other types of muscle toning exercise is the fact that yoga is low impact and works multiple parts of the body one at a time, depending on the pose. Yoga has internal healing qualities. The fact that yoga combines proper breathing with its movements has proven to be restorative and healing to the entire body by promoting circulation and fueling the blood, brain, and other organs with oxygen. Medical research shows undisputable proof that yoga reduces problematic digestive issues, prevents high blood pressure, lowers the heart rate, improves posture, reduces or eliminates stress and tension-induced headaches, helps with sleep disorders, and improves the tone and condition of your skin. Yoga brings mental clarity. The practice of yoga itself requires a certain amount of discipline in learning to breathe, mastering the poses, and combining the two to get the most from the exercises themselves. In working towards this, you will be required to focus and think about what you are doing. Additionally, the internal benefits of yoga described in the previous paragraph also work to clear brain fog, improve your memory, and your ability to process what you learn slash read with greater perception. Yoga improves your sex drive. We've already learned that practicing yoga increases and improves blood circulation throughout your body. Because sexual arousal and sensations are closely tied with the circulatory system, it only makes sense that you would enjoy a heightened sensation as a result of practicing yoga. When you discipline yourself to breathe and move with the natural flow of your body and mind, you cannot help but make things better. Each time you practice meditation for self-development, you begin to create a compatibility with your body and mind after you feel snug with your person you then start to make the world your own. Warning. When new to yoga, begin slowly so as not to injure yourself. Do not try advanced positions without working up to them. Remember to take yoga and every other aspect of meditation at a slow but sure pace. Remember, slow and steady wins the race, and the sky is the limit. There is something to be said for peace and quiet. Quietness of the mind in meditation for self-improvement is accomplished in several ways. Yoga, music, a quiet place, your imagination, a healthy diet, and the other things we've discussed thus far all work to help you effectively improve yourself through meditation. 
Now let's add one more to the list, peace and quiet. Donna and her family are sheep farmers with several hundred sheep to tend and care for each day. They also have a milk cow that provides milk for her family's use. Now while they all enjoy the milk, butter, cream, and other dairy products the milk provides, Donna is the only one who takes pleasure in milking the cow twice a day. She looks forward to those times of peace and quiet, with nothing but the sounds of the milk squirting into the pail and the cow munching on her food. These times are Donna's times to meditate on and focus on her goals and dreams for herself and her family. Spending time in complete silence and solitude is something some of us only dream about. You know what I'm talking about. You have either been the mom who has resorted to faking the need to use the bathroom for five minutes of peace, or you are now that very mom. Or maybe you are the guy who takes pleasure in weeding the garden because no one else wants to help giving him the peace and quiet he craves to think and resolve issues that are weighing on his heart and mind. To some, however, complete or near silence is distracting. Instead of promoting a positive meditation experience, it actually prevents it from happening. If this describes you, don't feel badly and don't think you are not a candidate for successful meditation. Instead, include background sounds that allow you to feel comfortable so that you can take the necessary steps toward meditation and relaxation. If you choose music, consider the soft, low sounds. Fast, loud music often increases your adrenaline, which will prevent you from being able to relax and experience true meditation. Other appropriate choices include white noise, the hum of a motor or clothes dryer, dripping water, etc., or nature sounds, such as waves, water rushing over rocks or down a waterfall, bugs and birds singing, wind rustling through the trees, rain falling on the ground or a tin roof. You get the message. You also need a place you can go to experience the peace and quiet you need in order to meditate. When choosing a place to be still, choose a place without interruptions and distractions rather than a busy place with noise and people coming and going. The right atmosphere for some of your most meaningful times of meditation is a personal and individual one. Find what works for you and let it take you on a positive and enjoyable meditation journey. While the barn is a place Donna can focus and experience a certain level of meditation, in order to get the benefits of total relaxation and meditation that will allow your body to physically and emotionally release stress and tension lurking within, you will need to find a quiet, peaceful place you can recline or lay down in. Stretch your body out to allow every muscle to relax and the body to experience even distribution of oxygen and circulation. Let your imagination take your mind and body wherever you want it to go and use your mind's eye to see it as clearly as if you were really there. As you do, you will begin to feel better. You will make sound decisions which will lead your mind and body to become more successful. One of the most common complaints people have when trying to learn to meditate and relax can be summed up in one word. Distraction. Don't let this be your excuse for not meditating. Anything is possible if you commit to making it happen. It just takes practice. The overall goal of meditation for self-development is to guide the body, mind, and spiritual being into union so they work in harmony. Keep practicing and you will achieve your goal. Facing your problems. When it comes to your problems, there are three undeniable facts. One, your problems are worse than some people's problems. Two, your problems are minor in comparison to some people's problems. 3. All of your problems have solutions. Statistics show that over 10% of America's adolescent and adult population is under the care and guidance of a therapist. The reason? They are searching for a way to unlock the closet that holds their skeletons and sweep them away. 
Now, while I am in no way discounting the fact that there are times when counseling and therapy are helpful, if not necessary, to bring healing and restoration, this is not always the case. If we would take the time and use the resources we have within ourselves, we can solve many of our own problems and heal our hearts and minds through the practice of meditation. Think about it. By adopting healthy eating habits, we can solve a number of problems, including being overweight or even obese. Cutting calories and fatty foods from our diet does not require counseling. It requires focus and determination. Reduce the stress on our heart. Losing weight reduces stress on our heart's job of pumping blood through the body. Medications for stress and anxiety do not. Lowering blood pressure. Medications are often necessary to get the job done, but the right diet can significantly reduce the need for medication or, at the very least, the strength of the medication used. Decrease our risks of certain diseases, including diabetes and some cancers. Definite links to these diseases and artificial sweeteners, food dyes, tobacco, chemicals used in preserving foods, and chemicals used to grow foods have all been verified in the medical field. Improve the condition of our skin. We are what we eat, and it shows. Save money formerly spent on fast foods. Prepackaged foods and fast foods cost more because there is more involved in getting them to your table. You can either spend two or three dollars on a bag of sliced apples treated with preservatives to keep them from turning brown and mushy, or you can spend the same amount on a half dozen apples you wish to wash and peel yourself. When we practice yoga, we increase muscle mass, which tones our body. Muscle weighs more than fat but takes less room, giving your body a firmer, trimmer appearance. Feeling stronger, more agile, and capable of enjoying a range of activities. Decreasing the risk of osteoporosis, arthritis, and other bone and joint ailments. Become more aware of our bodies and keeping them in top working condition. The blood and oxygen flow keeps your body in top working condition which allows you to enjoy a better quality of life overall. Taking time to relax and meditate allows us to focus on what is wrong in our life for the express purpose of making it better. Problems won't disappear by refusing to acknowledge they exist. Problems disappear when we resolve them. Reintroduces us to who we are, what we are passionate about, what we want out of life, and what we have to offer to the world around us. Oftentimes, our problems are self-inflicted. We refuse to allow ourselves to listen to our inner self to be the person we were made to be. Draws our attention and focus to the positives in our life, significantly reducing both the number and impact of the negativity in our life. Problems are like mold. If you don't get rid of it, it keeps on growing. By facing your problems instead of ignoring them, you have more time and energy to devote to good things in life. Gives us permission to set goals to make our dreams come true. Meditation puts you in touch with what you really want. By being forced to focus on the thoughts and feelings of your inner self, you gain the courage to live out your dreams. A word of caution. There's a difference between facing your problems for the purpose of solving them and focusing on your problems for the purpose of using them as a crutch or excuse for anything or everything. Meditation is a means by which you face your problems for all the right reasons. Discover your inner self through self-hypnosis and meditation. Meditation doesn't just happen. You guide your mind and body into a meditative state of repose using natural breathing with at least a few of the relaxation techniques we've discussed thus far. Yes, you have the ability to do this. That's right, the best tools we have at our disposal for meditation reside within us. We call this our inner self. When we commence to explore our mind, we often find answers to questions that have plagued us for years. We also start to see areas of our life we need to change in order to become happier and more successful. 
Self-fused hypnosis is a great strategy to collect oneself. The strategy is perhaps possible to achieve on your own, or you can hire a counselor to assist you. If you try to do this on your own, however, you will need to prepare yourself by spending time studying the procedure and or talking with those who are experienced in the practice of self-hypnosis. To some, self-hypnosis may seem too far out or mystical. This is not true. The practice of self-hypnosis, when done correctly, can be highly beneficial. By using this, as well as other relaxation techniques, you have the ability to reach inside your mind for the purpose of becoming the 100% you you were made to be. Note, the process is an aware state, so you have nothing to fear. We learn to control our hooks, phobias, fears, and health through self-hypnosis. Self-assurance hypnosis, when done well, can increase our sex drive, intimacy, and find healing from relationships. It can also open up the creative part of the brain as well as raise our comprehension levels. In short, self-hypnosis is the process of releasing our inhibitions and obstacles, sending them far, far away so that we can get on with the business of living the life we were meant to have. Get to know and like yourself through meditation. As children and teenagers, we all go through those periods when we seem to be wandering aimlessly through life, wondering who we are and what we are supposed to be doing. And in that wondering and dreamed and fantasized, then dreamed, then fantasized some more. To a child, nothing is impossible. The sky is the limit. But then something awful happens. We grow up and quit listening to our inner self. We listen to whatever or whoever is telling us to get real. And you know what happens then, don't you? Most of us end up settling rather than living life to the fullest. Your inner child is left behind wondering when life is going to really start. You may be convinced that this inner child is a thing of the past, but the fact of the matter is that this child will continue to haunt you until you take the time to explore and fulfill their, your, needs. If you don't believe that, Look at what Janice discovered. Janice was raised by her grandparents from the age of six when her parents were killed in a car accident. In addition to her and her grandparents, Janice also had the unusual honor of having her great-grandfather living with them as well. The two became very close, giving Janice a passion for talking to older people, letting them tell their stories, and making sure they know they have wisdom worth listening to. By the time Janice graduated from high school, her great-grandfather had passed away, and her grandparents were urging her to pursue a career in medicine or business, something that would enable her to always provide for herself since they would likely not be around for many more years. To their great joy, Janice graduated with a degree in business analysis and was offered a job with a solid and well-respected firm. They couldn't have been prouder. Janice, however, couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. She wasn't miserable by any means, but she wouldn't describe herself as happy either. She just was. That's all. A couple of years into her career, Janice's grandfather had an accident requiring physical therapy in order for him to fully recover. This meant putting him in a short-term care facility. From the day Janice walked through the door of the facility to meet her grandparents there, she knew. Janice knew that she needed to be working with elderly people if she was ever going to be truly happy. It took her less than a year to get enough hours of additional study to become a sociologist specializing in elder care. Today, she makes slightly less money, is able to live closer to her grandparents, and is happier than she has ever been. She even met her fiancé while he was visiting his grandmother at one of the facility's Janice services. By ignoring this integral part of your being, you are depriving yourself of so much. You can run, but you can't hide. Your emotional responses, attitudes, and actions are a reflection of that person you once discovered, but who you shoved into the box labeled childhood. Your inner child will follow you around until you take time to get reacquainted. Meditation allows you to reconnect with your inner child, rediscovering your goals and dreams in order to achieve them. 
Meditation will take you to a state of being able to hear and listen to your inner child so that you can truly be yourself. At the risk of sounding like a cliché, getting in touch with your inner self has to happen if you are going to truly meditate. I say this because by meditating, you will be exposing yourself to subconscious and suppressed thoughts, feelings, and desires. Some of these will be positive, others not so much. But it is only when you discover these things and accept them by taking action that you find true happiness and personal success. So let's get started down the path of finding and embracing your inner self through meditation. Moving Towards Self-Improvement Through Meditation The first step to take toward effective meditation is to prepare yourself by secluding yourself in a quiet place, one free of noises, distractions, and interruptions. Next, you will need to create an atmosphere that promotes rest and relaxation. For some, this is candlelight. For others, it is soft music or recordings of nature sounds. For others, it is a combination of any or all of these and still for others, nothing but solitary peace and quiet is all that is necessary. Now it is time to lie down or recline. Get comfortable. Breathe deeply and fully, allowing your mind and body to relax. As you become completely relaxed, you will feel physical sensations, which are your body's way of saying thank you for getting rid of the stress and anxiety that has been so intrusive. Once you've let these feelings go, accept these new feelings. Recognize them for what they are, the real you. Now you are ready to bring out the thoughts and feelings that we suppressed. You can now discover who you really are and take control of your life. This will require you to abolish old habits and negative ways of thinking and acting. It will require you to not allow yourself to be abused and neglected. By putting your true inner self in control of your life, you will be confident and accept, like, and even love yourself. When this happens, you are now in a position to turn your dreams into reality. Let's go back to the dreams you had for your life as a child. They were real and attainable to you at that time. But as you got older, life got in the way. At this point, you may feel stuck, like you settled for less than you deserved or were capable of. You may even feel you were living your life for someone else other than yourself. But worst of all, you may feel you don't have a choice. Great news! You are wrong. You do have a choice. You have the choice to explore your potential and the possibilities for your life through meditation. Through meditation, the concealed and hidden dreams you had in years past can come out of hiding. And when you combine meditation with goal setting and determination to meet those goals, your inner self will take you to where you really want and need to be. Goals plus meditation equals self-improvement. Setting goals is not a fantasy. No, setting goals is a means by which to accomplish your life's mission. Creating goals that are realistic and beneficial to your life will only happen when you first take the time to meditate to discover what your goals should be. When you approach goal setting this way, you will not only achieve your goals, but they will actually help you develop new skills, give you a sense of contentment, and give you the life satisfaction you've been looking for all your life. Meditation encourages you to probe into your dreams. In doing so, you will often acquire a desire to learn new skills based upon what you feel and visualize during these times of meditation. As you start to probe your inner mind, try to recall additional details or ideas from your experiences, education, learning, and look closely at what steps you have to take to embark up the life choices that satisfy your soul. Rather than work at a job that does not bring us contentment, Meditating helps us to discover what we want from life. Too many people spend too much time doing what they do not like. Most times, it brings them unhappiness. This unhappiness comes from people failing to connect with their inner self, to explore their needs, desires, goals, dreams, and so on. 
Oftentimes, they miss out on a life they would enjoy because they set unrealistic goals, goals they are not meant to achieve, or set no goals at all. Again, meditation is beneficial in helping us set and reach our goals. When we meditate, we discover our abilities, natural skills, personality type, and character. Knowing and embracing these things gives us the desire and drive to set goals. When we have goals, we have purpose, plans, and confidence to be who we are supposed to be. Furthermore, when we are making and meeting goals, we are in control of our life, and this is the goal of meditation. How would you rate yourself in the area of goal setting? How do you feel about setting goals? If you aren't in the habit of setting goals, it's time to start. Don't worry, you can take it slow and easy so as not to overwhelm yourself and give up before you even get started. During your next period of meditation, keep a pen and some paper handy. Use your time of meditation to focus on what your inner self is saying about the subject of your spending habits and household budget. As you meditate on these things, write down two or three goals you would like to set and achieve for spending more wisely, doing a better job of sticking to your budget, and or an expense you are willing to cut for the sake of saving for something bigger and better. Other tips for using the meditation tool of setting goals include set two personal relationship goals to be met by the end of the current season, set one professional goal to be met by the end of the year, set two goals that will lead to better health to be met by the end of the year, set a goal that brings self-satisfaction to be met by the end of the month, Controlling your mind with meditation. Picture it. You've just returned home from seeing your doctor for your annual physical. He or she told you that your body is exhibiting signs of being under too much stress. The doctor then proceeds to give you instructions on how to manage the stress in your life, one of which was to relax. Relax? Who has time for that? Not you. By the time you go to bed that night, you are even more stressed than ever due to thinking about how to reduce your stress level. It is not one of those happily ever after stories, is it? If this describes you, at least to some extent, your doctor also likely told you to stay active, make time for physical exercise, to make changes in your diet, to get plenty of sleep, and to take time to socialize and enjoy doing things you like to do. This speech was probably followed by warnings of heart problems, anxiety, depression, stroke, and even an early death if you don't comply. No wonder you are so stressed. You're overworked, overtired, and are on the verge of dying. Now while all these things are true and should be taken and followed as sound advice, the doctor left one very important element out of all of this, the element of telling you how to do these things. Initially, you need to meditate by allowing your mind to drift to some place you would like to be, say the destination of your dream vacation. Once there, allow yourself to feel as if you really are there, relaxed, happy, smiling. Do you know what just happened? You took control of your mind. You took it from a bad place to a good place. You decided to dwell or ponder on something positive rather than the doom and gloom you had just been feeling. This is not to be classified as burying your head in the sand. Instead, it is clearing your mind in preparation for dealing with the problem you are facing, too much stress, head-on, with positive actions rather than negative reactions. Some of you will call this daydreaming and will know or believe this type of meditation will not work for you. For some, Pushing the issue away during meditation is not nearly as effective as spending time pondering the situation from a realistic but positive frame of mind. For some, time spent meditating on the situation is better spent meditating on how to implement the doctor's instructions into your life in ways best suited to you. Rather than putting yourself in a faraway place, you may wish to soak in a hot bath to relax your joints and muscles, clear your mind, and decide what part of your day you are going to commit to exercise and what food substitutions you are going to make. Or maybe you find you meditate best walking in a quiet place, 
or sitting on the edge of a lake watching the water ripple from shore to shore. Whatever works best for you is what you should do. The point is to not give up finding the best way or ways for you to discover the resources in you that can help you meditate effectively. Meditation can help you achieve your goals. Stressful situations exist in society and there is absolutely nothing you can do to change that. Divorce is stressful. Unemployment is stressful. A diagnosis of cancer is stressful. Excessive debt is stressful. The pain of a rebellious child or a parent with Alzheimer's is stressful. Dealing with yours or a loved one's addiction is stressful. Being in an abusive relationship is stressful. Death of a loved one is stressful. Wait, isn't this book supposed to be about living a stress-free life through meditation? No, it is not. This book is about living a life that focuses on using meditation to take control of your life rather than letting stressful situations control you. This book is about turning stressful situations into challenges and opportunities to grow rather than allow them to drag you down. For example, when a loved one passes away due to heart disease, you can turn the negative stress into positive results by striving harder to avoid having the same thing happen to you. Another example would be to use the stress of too much debt to challenge you to adjust your lifestyle and develop a budget that puts you living within your means. Do you see how viewing situations in a positive light is better all around for your physical, mental, and emotional well-being? Using meditation to make you aware of what your options are for dealing with stressful situations and how to deal with these situations in a positive manner is the answer you are looking for when you leave the doctor's office. So using your preferred method of relaxation, commence to clear your mind so that you can be forward-looking allowing you to make goals for deliberately turning stress into fuel for success. Attitude is platitude for self-improvement through meditation. Our attitudes are our personal outlooks and approaches. Our attitudes are a reflection of our personality. People decide what type of person we are based on our attitude. When you have a positive attitude, people are likely to think of you as a winner. On the other hand, if your attitude is negative, people may try to hide when they see you coming. No one wants to be that person everyone hides from or pretends not to see. But when you allow negative influences, distorted beliefs, unfortunate circumstances, and poor choices to turn you into someone who is bitter, angry, and lashes out at the world, this is exactly the kind of person you will be. On the other hand, Someone who looks for and finds the good in situations and who views every life event as an opportunity to grow and be a better you will find themselves sought out socially, respected professionally, and admired by family and friends alike. By using meditation to formulate positive attitudes, you can be this person. Alan was taking a leisurely ride on his motorcycle when he hit a patch of loose gravel flipping the bike out from under him and landing on top of him. Alan is now a quadriplegic. He will never hug his wife or daughter again. He will never feed himself, bathe himself, walk, throw a ball, or any of the other things he did every day of his life before the accident. Alan's situation would be enough to make anyone bitter, angry, depressed, and every other similar emotion. Alan, however, is not. Yes, he went through a surprisingly brief period of self-pity and wondering if he and everyone else would be better off if he would have died. But Alan decided early on that an attitude of despair would be nothing but a waste of energy. Instead, he decided to focus his energy on having an attitude of thankfulness that he was able to express his love verbally and use his intelligence and wisdom to help others in his situation. He lifted his attitude up to the highest possible platitude, for his sake as well as the sake of everyone around him. Meditation is taking the time to develop positive attitudes about even the most difficult situations. When you use meditation to ask yourself the difficult questions and use images and visualizations to formulate answers to your questions, positivity reigns and clarity prevails. 
Take time each and every day to meditate for the purpose of developing positive attitudes that you will make you the person you would want for a best friend. Using the relaxation methods you find most helpful, set goals to become a positive thinker by getting rid of the things that germinate negativity. Things like bad habits. Make an honest list of your bad habits. You are the only one who loses if you aren't completely honest. Spend time each day meditating on what you need to do to counteract these habits. For example, if you have a habit of yelling at your children whenever you find yourself raising your voice, place your hand over your mouth, excuse yourself, take a drink of water or something else on that order that will require you to focus on changing your attitude. If you have a weight problem, meditate on being a healthier you and use imagery to see yourself thinner and physically fit and make goals to exercise and eat a healthy diet in order to become what you envision. Grudges. Do you have a negative attitude about your ex-husband or wife? Designate a portion of your meditation time to remembering why you fell in love with that person and the happiness you once had. Use these thoughts to bring you to the truth that your negative thoughts are not solving anything nor are they adversely affecting your ex. He or she is going to live life the way they want to no matter what you think. Poor self-esteem. While the section on affirmations dealt with the issue of the necessity of loving yourself in order to get the most from your meditation experience, it is important enough to repeat again and again and again and... No one can truly meditate successfully and meaningfully without having a positive attitude about themselves. The fact that there are so many people dealing with eating disorders and other self-destructive behaviors creates the undeniable truth that loving yourself is much easier said than done. So you see, while your bad attitude does influence how people feel about you, you are the one who gets hurt the worst every single time if for no other reason than to counteract this fact, commit to meditating at least once a day, making sure that part of the time meditating is spent on developing a positive attitude and habits that show the world you believe in you and being the best you possible. My Meditation Plan To this point, your journey to meditation has been primarily one of learning the fundamentals of meditation and being encouraged to think about some of the what's, how's, and why's of meditation for you. Now it is time to actually formulate a meditation plan. When will you meditate? Where will you meditate? What relaxation techniques will you use? What are your meditation goals? How will you track your progress? Take time out of your reading right now to write out your meditation plan. Write it in such a way that you will go back to it on a regular basis to record your progress. Be in control. Controlling your body and mind is not only a responsibility, but a gift you give yourself, because when you lose control, you lose vision of your goals. These feelings of a lack of control often lead to depression and failure. The only way out of this mind trap is to regain your self-control, and the only way to regain your self-control is meditation. Self-control is a matter of discovering your innate powers, the powers of your inner self that will point you toward personal happiness and success. One way to use meditation to accomplish this is thought transference. You can start by focusing on an object in your room. Focus until this thing starts to mean something to you. Once you start to see meaning, carry on with your meditation process to discover new ideas. You may believe an object in your room has anything to do with conjuring up new ideas, but the fact is that your mind will start to probe on something that associates with the object. That object can be anything you choose. You can decide to focus on your blank television screen, and in a short while, your mind will start to contemplate. As ideas start to turn over in your mind, you will begin to mull over the reflections that you recall from your past. These reflections will, in turn, lead you to think about how these reflections can work to make your life better now. 
Sometimes, these thought transferences can make you feel uneasy, but do not let that stop you. Keep focusing on the object and what it represents until resolution is clear and feasible. Stay focused on the desired end result. Stay the course with meditation for self-improvement. Staying the course in your commitment to self-improvement through meditation will give you the ability to think clearly and rationally. By practicing the skills of meditation and relaxation, your confidence level will soar and you will exhibit a healthier, happier lifestyle. Your grandmother may have summed this statement up by simply saying, you have to have a good head on your shoulders, or you have to keep your head on straight. Surprisingly, this is more of a problem than you might think it is. Or maybe you aren't so surprised. Maybe you feel like your life is such a chaotic mess that you can't think straight. Once again though, meditation to the rescue. Using meditation to reprogram your mind to be rational and consistent is just another one of its benefits. To reprogram your mind to think clearly and rationally, include repetition in your meditation time. For example, you can defeat the obstacle of self-doubt and poor self-esteem so many are plagued with using the repetitive exercise of looking in the mirror every day for a minute or two repeating the phrase, I am a good person and I deserve to be happy and successful. When you do this every day, day in and day out, you will begin to believe that what you are saying is true. And when you come to the point of believing what you hear yourself saying, you will begin to live that way. Focusing on one thing at a time also helps you to make better decisions. When we have too many things going on in our mind, it makes it hard to do any of them as well as we could have if we weren't being pulled in so many different directions. But when you learn to relax with meditation, the ability to focus will enable you to stay the course and clear each hurdle one at a time. Don't expect overnight results though, it just isn't possible. Remember, your life didn't get to where it is overnight, so you cannot expect it to be undone overnight either. Seeing and experiencing the results of meditation is like losing weight and keeping it off. When you do it slowly and correctly, the results are true and lasting. The first results you will likely notice will be feeling better about yourself as a person. You will notice that the things that once bothered you or stressed you out aren't nearly so big and bad anymore. Next, you will notice the fact that others are noticing the changes in you and responding to you in a more positive manner. This, in turn, will increase your self-confidence even more, leading you to make better decisions and focus on what makes you happy and on and on the cycle goes, making you and everyone around you better for it. That's right. Your personal life, as well as your professional life, benefit from your ability to relax, think clearly, make sound decisions, and handle stress instead of letting it handle you. In short, meditation also allows you to manage your anger. By learning to think clearly and respond to situations rather than reacting to them, you will be able to control your anger, which when we stop and think about it, is never constructive. Think about it. When was the last time you were angry? Why did you get angry? What was your response to your anger? Did your response help or hurt the situation? More times than not, your response did not help the situation. If nothing else, the time it took to be angry was time you will never get back. Time that could have been used for other and better things. So instead of getting angry, or even as the saying goes, when you feel yourself getting angry, take 10. Yes, it actually does help to take 10 deep breaths and visualize how you want the situation to be resolved. By taking 10, you are allowing yourself the time to rationalize and think clearly. Though short and sweet, this time of brief meditation will go a long way towards improving your life. The Process of Meditation Everyone needs to be aware of their feelings and inner self, and meditation is the most natural way to get there. The benefits of meditation are significant, 
and can be achieved by setting aside 20 minutes a day. Because society has become so task-oriented and driven, when we learn to relax by meditating, we are actually learning a new way of life. Meditation improves life as you know it by reducing pain, relieving stress, allowing you to sleep and rest better, giving you better overall health, and allowing you to focus on who you are and what you are meant to accomplish. While there are several different relaxation techniques to choose from to put you in a rested and meditative state, as well as different ways to practice meditation, the following steps are basic fundamentals of meditation that need to be practiced daily in order for you to experience the desired results. 1. Meditate. To begin the process of meditation, you need to find a restful, quiet place to lay down or recline with your arms and legs straight out so that your limbs can experience uninhibited oxygen and circulation. You now need to focus on a single object. Set your sights on that one thing, something that will help you to forget about everything going on outside of your surroundings. Focus so that you forget about everything and everyone else. Note. Shutting off distractions is essential for successful and effective meditation. 2. Visualize and imagine. Visualize yourself in a place you want to be, a tropical island in front of a fire with a good book, skiing down snow-covered mountains, sailing across the lake, ambling through a forest full of autumn colors. Wherever you feel at peace is where you need to be. Once there, imagine your experience by hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and seeing everything around you by using the senses in your mind. Let yourself go on the journey of a lifetime. 3. Be consistent. 20 minutes a day is all it takes to realize the benefits of meditation, benefits that improve your life physically, emotionally, and mentally. Don't allow your busy life to convince you 20 minutes isn't possible. Everyone has 20 minutes they can spare each day if they really want to. Whether it means getting up earlier, watching one less television show, spending fewer minutes on the computer, or sending a few less texts, you deserve to give yourself the time to become a better, happier, healthier you. Self-Help Tools for Optimal Meditation Using any or all of the following meditation tools works to enhance your meditation experience. While not completely necessary, these things will serve as motivators, help you track your progress, make you more physically fit, and give you the confidence you need to make better choices and take steps towards fulfilling your dreams and reaching your goals. Books, CDs, and DVDs that teach yoga, organic eating and living, Breathing exercises and self-hypnosis are especially helpful for beginners. Having instructional materials to follow give you the reassurance that you are meditating correctly. CDs, MP3s, music downloads, and radio. Providing music or nature sounds have proven highly effective in promoting high states of relaxation. Comfortable clothing is preferred when practicing meditation. It is difficult to be fully relaxed wearing scratchy, constricting clothing. Candles are great for creating a relaxing mood conducive to meditation. At this point, it seems reasonable to take some time to talk about the religious aspects of meditation. I say this because religion is an important aspect in the lives of millions of people, and in one way or another, all of the world's religions practice some form of meditation as a means of connecting with their faith and beliefs. Christianity's meditation is called prayer. Praying to God allows Christians to recognize God's holiness, thank God for His creation and blessings, ask God for the blessings He wants to bestow upon them, ask forgiveness for transgressions, and seek guidance for living a purposeful life, the purposeful life God created each person to live. Baha'i faith also considers prayer as a form of meditation. The meditation and prayer are for the purpose of understanding God and the words of the Baha'i writings twice a day. 
no particular meditation practices are prescribed, leaving it up to personal preference. Buddhism sees meditation as the path to enlightenment and serenity. Breathing, positions, environment, and creating a pure path for the mind and body by cleansing the body and the mind are all important aspects of meditation to a Buddhist. Much of today's meditation practices are based upon those of Buddhism. Hinduism relies heavily on meditation and mantras. There are many styles and degrees of meditation in the Hindu religion, most all of which include the practice of yoga. In fact, yoga is said to allow for miraculous powers. Islam uses meditation in their own form of prayer to recite the many names and qualities of Allah. Meditation is a means by which they can focus on obedience to the Quran and to be worthy of entering heaven. Judaism, like Christianity, uses prayer as a form of meditation to speak to God and to hear what He has to say to them. Prayer is a means of communication for thanksgiving, recognition, forgiveness, supplication, and submission. Other world religions including New Age, Sikhism, and the occult all use forms of meditation in their practices and rituals. So no matter what your beliefs and religious practices are, allow its form or forms of meditation to enhance your experience and make you a better, stronger, happier, healthier, and more successful person. Meditation leads to smart living. More and more people these days are realizing the value of living a more natural lifestyle, one that includes eating a healthy diet, listening to your body, and treating both your body and mind the way it was created to be treated. The practice of meditation strongly opposes the use of alcohol, tobacco, and drugs, anything that invades the body in an unnatural way. But there is a big difference between realizing the value of living like this and actually doing so. Old habits are hard to break, especially when you don't think you have the time to work on doing so. Once again, though, you have the time and ability if you want to have the time and ability to change your life for the better through meditation. Meditating is a natural way of learning to focus on how you think, perform, and make decisions. You can search deep within you, challenging your own thoughts to improve your life. This will require you to make changes in your life. It also requires practice and patience. Don't give up if you don't succeed the first time. We all make mistakes, but if we learn from our mistakes, they become lessons. Once you determine or decide to live cleaner and smarter, the next step is to set goals. When setting goals to live a cleaner, smarter life, remember this. Don't set too many goals at one time. It is better to meet one or two goals at a time than to set several and meet none of them. Don't set unrealistic goals. For example, setting a goal to be a millionaire in two years is not a realistic goal. Saving $1,000 a year is completely realistic and can be accomplished by putting $20 a week aside. If your goal is to lose weight, set a goal to lose 5 pounds in 6 weeks instead of 30 pounds in 6 weeks. Set goals that improve your life. For example, setting a goal to lose weight through exercise and healthy eating is a positive life-changing goal. Setting the goal to watch every episode of Mad Men or Army Wives in a month, not so self-improving. Set goals you can track and measure in order to experience the satisfaction that comes with success. Thinking back to the example of losing 5 pounds in 6 weeks versus 30 pounds in 6 months, it is more satisfying to be able to track your success in short periods of time rather than waiting and waiting and waiting to see if you meet the goal. Set both short and long-term goals. Doing so gives you something to strive for consistently. Examples of short-term goals Cleaning the garage Donating clothes you haven't worn in a year to charity Getting rid of all the expired food in the house Walking four times a week for a minimum of 30 minutes each time Examples of long-term goals Saving a thousand dollars a year Sending everyone in your family a birthday card Buying one Christmas gift a month to make it easier on your budget during the holidays Reading a book a month 
living a cleaner, more natural life is more than goals, though. It is purposefully making choices to take the natural route over the easy route. So what does that mean? In actuality, it can mean a lot of things, but for the sake of time and space, we will stick with listing the basics and let you take it from there. A clean, natural lifestyle means eating only foods that are grown naturally and without the use of any fertilizers, pesticides, hormones, dyes, or other chemicals that are not plant or animal matter based. Using and wearing natural fabrics instead of synthetics. Using glass, wood, and cast iron dishes and cooking utensils rather than plastics. Using plant and animal matter based cleaning and laundry products such as baking soda, salt, borax, vinegar, citrus juices, etc. Wearing minimal makeup or cosmetics. Recycling paper, glass, and all other possible materials. You may not think these things have much or anything to do with meditation, but au contraire. When you take the time to do anything that makes you more in tune or connected to the natural state of your body, mind, and soul, you are participating in a form of meditation and living with the results, a.k.a. benefits of the same. Meditation requires you to explore your mind. New information is being released every day, which lends itself to self-improvement that comes from exploring your inner thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Learning to find yourself by exploring your inner thoughts and become the person you want to be is yet another vital element and benefit of the practice of meditation. To explore your mind is to openly and honestly analyze yourself to find the real person deep down inside yourself. Without knowing and acknowledging who you really are, you deprive yourself of so much. But when you are aware of who you are, you will reach your full potential in ways you never dreamed possible. Using meditation skills to find yourself by focusing on how you feel and how you want to feel is where it all begins. Everyone needs a purpose or reason to want to live a happy, successful life. Meditation is the catalyst that will allow you to discover what that purpose is and how to go about fulfilling it. Using your desired relaxation technique and tools, spend some time meditating on what you feel your purpose in life is. Where does your mind drift to? Your spouse and children? Advancing your career? Fulfilling your life's dreams? Reaching out to those in need? Writing a social wrong? When you give your mind and body over to itself, where does it go? This is your purpose, or these are your purposes. Once you have a clearer perspective on why you are here, you can begin making goals towards fulfilling your purpose each and every day of your life, at least on some level. Don't worry about the mistakes you've made in the past or the ones you will make in the future. No one is perfect. Besides, mistakes are lessons if we allow them to be, and who doesn't need a lesson every now and then? Don't let the shame or embarrassment of the past or the fear of the future hold you back. Keep your eye on the prize of being happy and successful by spending time meditating on who you are and what you need, what you want to do each and every day. In doing so, you will be able to avoid bad choices. You will be able to release the pressures and stresses that can come with living out your purpose if you don't keep yourself focused and calm. Exploring your mind through meditation also leads to a heightened state of awareness. You will find that when you spend time each day meditating, you will experience an improved memory and better powers of observation. These new and improved skills will work with the other benefits of meditation to make your life well-rounded and better in practically every way. Just like part of meditation can include yoga and breathing techniques for the purpose of strengthening and toning the body, mental exercises to sharpen your memory and powers of observation can be a part of your meditation each day or even a couple of days each week. There are a number of resources available to help you with this. Books and websites abound that contain brain teasers and word puzzles. Try your hand, or mind, at some of these. They are actually a lot of fun. 
Finally, in regards to exploring your mind as part of your meditation, you need to know the importance of correct breathing. Proper breathing allows for optimal oxygen intake. This is necessary in order for cells to live. And since our body is made up of cells, well, you get the picture. Oxygen is also what fuels our metabolism. So for a healthy metabolism, which is what decides our calorie burn, fat burn, etc., we need to have sufficient oxygen. Not only that, proper breathing also improves digestion and bowel movement, removes toxins from the body, reduces brain fog and lethargy, can lower blood pressure, strengthens your immune system, reduces anxiety and depression. In spite of the fact that we literally breathe to live, however, the vast majority of people do not breathe properly. Oh sure, they take in oxygen and let out carbon dioxide and remain upright and functional, but that is like saying anyone who gets behind the wheel of a car and makes it move can be qualified as an expert driver, something we know is not true. So how do we get the most out of our breathing? By breathing properly, that's how. To make sure you are breathing properly, or to teach you the correct way to breathe, you need to A. Lay flat on your back on the floor. B. Place your hand palm down on the top of your abdomen, just under your ribs. C. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Did your ribs and possibly even your shoulders lift when you took a breath in? If so, you were not breathing correctly. If on the other hand, your stomach rose and fell, you were breathing using the top and bottom of your lungs as you should. It is important to spend time each day practicing correct breathing until it becomes something you do subconsciously without even having to try. Let's recap the benefits of meditation. Thus far, you've been presented with a large amount of information on how to meditate and why. In fact, some of it has been somewhat repetitious. This is not without good reason, though, and the reason is this. Everything in the practice of meditation is linked together. A quiet place where you relax using proper breathing allows you to focus on who you are and what you want and need by using your imagination and mind's eye makes you happier and healthier. When you are happier and healthier, you have a clearer mind to make better decisions in all areas of your life, including adopting a healthier diet and lifestyle, observing what is going on around you, listening to your inner self, and on and on and on. It is, in the words of the Disney song, The Circle of Life. That being said, let's take a quick review of the benefits of meditation using the meditation practices we've looked at so far. Organic living cleanses the body of toxins, fuels your body with the foods it was made to take in, promotes better health, allows you to lose weight, rids your environment of chemicals and toxins, enables you to do your part in keeping waste down to a minimum, and gives you the opportunity to get the most benefit from plant and animal matter. Yoga builds muscle mass, trims and tones your body, gives you greater flexibility, allows your body to take in and use oxygen optimally, forces you to focus on your breathing and making your body work for you. Relaxation Putting your body in a state of repose and relaxation releases physical and emotional tension and stress in a literal way. You can actually feel the tension and stress leaving your body. Self-hypnosis removes the barriers of fear and doubt from your mind that often keep you from making positive changes in your life. Your inhibitions are non-existent in a hypnotic state, making you able to conquer your fears and break bad habits you might otherwise not be able to do due to a lack of self-confidence. Imagery, visualization, self-awareness, self-evaluation. All of these, in addition to exercises in memory and observation, create a heightened sense of self-confidence. Focus on the positive rather than the negative. Discipline you to make and meet realistic goals and allow you to live your dreams rather than stay stuck in a life you are not satisfied with. While these things are all extremely important for proper meditation, it is fair to say that getting to the point of using your imagination, examining your inner self, 
becoming more aware of yourself and your surroundings and other benefits of meditation just don't happen at the same time in the same way for everyone. Just like true relaxation happens in a dark room for some and beside a cozy fire for others, there are different methods for using meditation for self-improvement. Let's look at a few of them now. Writing and Meditation So often we want to give a voice to our thoughts and feelings, but are either too afraid to trust someone with these thoughts and feelings, or we don't really have anyone we can confide in. Or you may be the type of person who enjoys writing. If any of these describes you, you will find writing your thoughts and feelings down to be very therapeutic. Writing or journaling is a wonderful way to give credence to your thoughts and feelings, to set and track goals, and to keep you focused on your commitment to meditation. When journaling, don't worry about being eloquent, using full or correct sentences, or even spelling and grammar. Just write from the depth of your heart, soul, and mind for the purpose of seeing yourself for who you really are and for who you want to become. Other helpful hints for using writing as a technique for meditation include setting aside a specific time each day for writing. Make it part of your relaxation time. Have a safe place to keep your journal so they won't be read by others. Give yourself the gift of incentives for writing such as a pretty journal and a special pen. Write letters to yourself to be read at specific times in the future. These will serve to encourage and remind you of what you have accomplished and what you still wish to do. Positive Thinking and Meditation With everything we see and hear on the news, it's no wonder our minds are filled with so many negative thoughts. When you combine this with the negative energy that seems to take hold everywhere you look, it is almost impossible to escape the merry-go-round of naysaying. Notice I said, almost, meaning there is hope that the hope involves meditation and positive thinking. That's right, you have a choice. No one can force you to think negative thoughts. No one can force you to be pessimistic and see the glass as half empty. You and only you decide to think and feel this way, or to search for and find the good and positive in every situation. Let's look at how this works. Your boss passes you over for the promotion you really wanted. Your initial responses are anger, frustration, indignation, and plain old-fashioned pouting that life isn't fair. In short, you choose only to see the negative side of the situation. If, however, you practice the art of positive thinking, you will be disappointed, yes, but rather than dwelling on the fact that you didn't get the promotion, you will focus on the positives of having more responsibility in your present position, not having to spend time away from your family that you would have if you would have gotten the promotion, and the fact that you enjoy the job you have and that it is enough to support you and your family. You may be thinking this is easier said than done, but not really. By choosing something positive in your life to focus on during meditation, you will become a more positive thinking person without even really thinking about it. Items that help you do this include flowers, pictures of loved ones, homey scented candles, a soft blanket, a memento from your childhood, a favorite book, or an award you won. Using something to promote positive thoughts is an important first step in becoming more positive, but ultimately being a positive thinker rather than a negative thinker is a choice you and only you can make. Meditation simply makes it easier to make the choice to be positive. Reservations are for dinner or lodging. I don't know if I can, but what if? I'm not sure this is such a good idea. That may work for you, but I... What do all of those statements have in common? They are all filled with reservation, otherwise known as doubts. While there is nothing wrong with thinking things through, we cannot let our fears keep us from making things happen. It is also better to make decisions based upon facts than to always rush in impulsively. But there is a difference between rash impulsiveness and taking risks for the right reasons. Let's examine them both. Low self-esteem causes us to have undue reservations about what we should do. The lack of confidence we have keeps us from listening to our inner self 
and following our hearts down the path to our individual success and happiness. Low self-esteem invites addictions, self-destructive behavior, anxiety, and depression. Meditation works to heal your mind of these negative feelings and give you the confidence and self-esteem worthy of the person inside of you. Fear is another cause of reservations. Fear of failure, fear of disappointment, fear of rejection, Fear builds a great big house for reservations, invites them in, then locks the door and throws the key out the window. There is no shame in being afraid. We all have things or situations we are afraid of. The shame comes when we allow those fears to rule our lives. When we allow our fears to dictate the decisions we make, we aren't living. We are residing in a place we don't feel safe in, one we can never succeed in. Meditation puts fear in perspective by letting us see we are bigger than our fears and that we possess the power to overcome them by using our inner self. Laziness also holds us back from happiness and success. We would rather have someone do everything for us or blame our surroundings for the fact that we don't have what we want. Laziness is actually a form of fear. Our lack of drive and enthusiasm is a sort of fear that we don't have what it takes, that we won't measure up. So rather than trying, we depend on others so we don't have to bear any responsibility for what might go wrong. With that, however, comes the flip side of not being able to delight in any accomplishments we make. Reservations of this type do nothing but hold us back. Until we realize we are ultimately responsible for who we are, what we do, and how we feel about the world around us, the reservations we have about living life will keep us stuck in a not-so-good place. The surest way to overcome the crippling effect of reservations is to make goals and strive toward achieving them. Consciously meditating each and every day about the goals you want to make and taking steps to achieve and maintain your goals leaves no room in your life for reservations. Okay. Now let's look at the opposite side of this coin. There are times when your reservations actually save you from making foolish and costly mistakes. Some people will call these gut instincts or intuition. These are the reservations that say you are headed for danger or trouble or that something is not going to be beneficial to you in any way. You will experience these types of reservations when you are in the throes of a situation or when you are meditating on certain decisions you are trying to make. When you do, listen to them. Maria was enjoying her daily time of meditation one afternoon a few years ago. She was devoting the time to searching for answers about an impending job change. For a reason she did not initially understand, she was having difficulty focusing on the decision she needed to make. Instead, her thoughts kept going to the fact that she had not yet scheduled her yearly physical. She felt fine. Did she really need one? Besides, the unexpected car repairs had put a dent in their budget and she really didn't have the money to spare for the deductible on their insurance. Over the next few days, the feeling of needing to see the doctor persisted so she called, made the appointment, and went on about her business. But when the doctor examined her, he discovered a lump on her breast she had not seen. It proved to be cancerous, but thankfully they caught it early and has been cancer-free for ever since. But had she not listened to her reservation about not going for her physical, Maria's story would have had a much different ending. These reservations are your inner self talking to you, guiding you to make the right decisions. These times are meditation in action. Powering over or through your reservations, depending upon the circumstance, will give you success by putting you in control of your life. Reflection and Meditation When you lay down or recline in your quiet place to relax and meditate, your mind will naturally be drawn to the past. Whether you are focusing on the past to help you relax or meditating on the past to bring you to a better present and future, reflection is an important part of meditation. Additionally, reflection serves to bring buried feelings and emotions to the surface to be dealt with. Wishing the past away or pretending it didn't happen doesn't solve anything. It only makes it worse. By bringing these things to the surface using meditation, 
you are able to face them and deal with them using the positive qualities of your inner self, rather than using them as weapons against someone or something. Keep memories we hold dear close to our hearts and minds to help us through bad times and to remind us of how special each of us is in our own right. We all have special memories of time spent with a loved one, a special vacation, falling in love, getting married, giving birth, and precious life events. Focusing on these memories reminds us of how much we have accomplished and how loved we are. In turn, these memories feed our self-confidence for the purpose of listening to our inner self to be happy and successful. Help us avoid making the same mistakes over and over. A mistake is just that and nothing more if we don't learn from it. Reflecting on our mistakes to avoid doing or saying something harmful or hurting a second time is the smart way to live. Remind us of the goals we have set. It also allows us to see and revel in our progress of meeting those goals and to bask in the glow of our accomplishment. Reflecting on past accomplishments can serve as a motivator to aspire to bigger and better things, or at the very least, maintain the level of success you have experienced. Reflecting on your past accomplishments for the purpose of cheering you on to meet your goals is healthy and can be a regular part of your meditation process. That being said, there can be a risk of living in the past rather than merely reflecting on the past. To get an idea of what this looks like, think about the 50-year-old cab driver who couldn't or wouldn't get past not being picked to play college football. Or think about the mom who refuses to grow up and shops in the junior department because she refuses to admit she isn't 20-something anymore. Act as a self-evaluation mechanism. Every job has, or should have, performance evaluations. Meditative reflection is the performance evaluation you give yourself on how well you are doing you. So take a few minutes, relax, let the stresses of the day go, and reflect on how well you are doing so far with your commitment to meditate regularly. When you have done that, come back and answer these questions. How are you doing? What would you like to change about the way you are meditating? What benefits have you received from meditating thus far? What goals do you have for your meditation practices? Exercising your brain we hear and see all sorts of information on the importance of keeping our bodies physically fit. Yoga, walking, aerobics, Zumba, lifting and exercising with weights, running and jogging, the list goes on and on. But how much time do we devote to encouraging exercising of the mind? The answer is not enough. Our brains need exercise just like our bodies do. Depriving our brains of exercise sets us up for memory lapses brain fog, sleeplessness, irritability, and even dementia and Alzheimer's. Begin exercising your brain by recalling events from your past. Who was there? Where were you? What was said? What did you wear? What happened? You can incorporate this simple brain exercise into your meditation by using these memories to help you make better choices and good decisions. But you do not have to reserve brain exercises for times of meditation. You can exercise your brain by doing a variety of puzzles. The following websites offer free puzzles and brain teasers for you to enjoy. www.buzzle.com forward slash articles forward slash brain teasers with answers. researchmaniacs.com forward slash riddles forward slash brain teasers dot html. www.answers.com forward slash t forward slash brain underscore teasers underscore and underscore logic underscore puzzles hash sign reading at least a few pages of a book each day reading is a great way to learn something new increase your vocabulary take you somewhere you want to go and educate you on any given subject library cards are free or low cost and allow you to check out an unlimited number of books if you prefer the e-reader format, there are even free books available for you to enjoy on any subject as well. Simply go to your preferred format's website and type in a search for free books. Learning new skills. You might not be able to teach an old dog new tricks, but you are no dog and you can learn anything you want to learn. 
If you don't believe that, ask Wally Tybelson, who earned his third master's degree at age 90. Having a hobby that requires you to concentrate and think. No matter what your hobby or hobbies of choice are, chances are pretty good that you cannot enjoy them without a certain amount of concentration and decision making. Doing these things exercises the brain and keeps you sharp and focused. Engaging in conversation with people. Our society is in a real and constant danger of being in a state of continual brain fog. The reason? No one talks to each other anymore. I know dozens of families who text each other across the room or from one room of the house to another. Seriously? Come on, people. Use your brain and your senses to communicate. There are some things the written word cannot convey, things such as tone and mood. Reading the news. Staying current and informed gives you something to talk to people about. It also gives you a reason to form opinions and think about how you feel. Playing board games. Like puzzles, board games require you to calculate, formulate, and strategize. Writing down your thoughts and reading what you write. This is a form of reflection, but exercises your ability to recall and process events just the same. Memorizing poetry, Bible verses, or the words to songs you enjoy singing, and even lines from movies or recipes. Memorizing is brain exercise at intense levels. Build your vocabulary by learning the meanings of new words, using them in context, and learning to spell them. It is never a bad idea to enhance your education. Practicing some sort of brain exercise each day during your time of meditation, memorizing a quote, Bible verse or poem, for instance, and using it to guide you toward listening to your inner self is an excellent way to incorporate this aspect of meditation into your daily routine. The other forms of brain exercise can be practiced and enjoyed throughout the day in any number of settings. Discover your inner strengths through meditation. Since our unconscious state of mind houses information, knowledge, and details that help us to develop our skills, we often benefit by learning how to meditate when focusing on getting in touch with our subconscious mind. The goal is to unite the conscious mind with the subliminal mind so that it works in harmony, giving us strengths and insights we can use it to make necessary changes in our life and to improve the quality of our life. You can bring unity to the conscious and subliminal, subconscious mind through meditation. Connecting the two through meditation will allow you to experience a more successful and happier life because when you listen to the subconscious, you will discover things about yourself you can use to achieve personal happiness and success. To help put this into perspective, ask yourself the following questions. 1. If you could do anything for a profession, what would it be? 2. If you could have one personality trait you don't feel you have, what would it be? 3. If you could write one social ill, what would it be? How would you go about doing it? Part of listening to your inner self through meditation can and should include making a list of goals based on how you answered the above questions due to the fact that how you answered those questions says quite a bit about a. who you are and b how much you have discovered about your inner self so far. These goals should address what you can do to feel better about yourself, allow your inner self to surface and reveal itself, act upon your heart's desires and passions. After listing your goals, put the list where you can see it throughout the day to remind your brain that you can and will be successful with meditation to strengthen your self-development skills. Remember, with subliminal learning and meditation, you can succeed. Feel great through meditation. We all need to find ourselves and be comfortable with our thoughts, feelings, emotion, and physical body in order to be truly happy and successful. The practice of meditation makes this possible. When we meditate, our bodies become relaxed, but our minds remain alert to our immediate surroundings. We are keenly aware of the object or objects we are focusing on as well as our inner thoughts and imagination. 
Meditation is a form of relaxation that allows us to find our inner self to become the person we always wanted to be. Meditation helps us become the person we want to be by directing us to make sound decisions, live healthier lifestyles, be more aware of our surroundings, and handle stress in a positive way rather than negatively. We become someone who has a positive outlook on life and who remains calm, rational, and focused. Meditation is a form of empowerment that allows you to sleep better, look better, and navigate life better. In other words, meditation is the feel-good exercise for the body, soul, and mind. In addition to the acts of relaxation and meditation, yoga also makes a tremendous difference in your physical body and general outlook on life. Because yoga practices deep, correct breathing, as well as muscle toning and stretching exercises, your body is able to be free of sore muscles, pain-causing tension, and aching joints. Who wouldn't want to be rid of those things, right? Dietary changes are usually involved in meditation as well. Not necessarily as a prerequisite to meditation, but rather as a meditation practice and result of coming to the knowledge that meditation includes cleansing the physical as well as the mental. Most of the time, the goal of dietary changes is to go organic. Adopting an organic diet won't happen overnight. It shouldn't happen overnight. Your body needs to adapt to these changes slowly and over time. Yes, there are changes that can be made cold turkey, changes like giving up fast food, soda, and sugary cereals and candy. But to completely turn your diet upside down usually leads to a distressed digestive system, which leads to feeling sluggish and bad, which leads to feeling as though the meditation process is not beneficial, which leads to giving up. Whew, that was quite a ride, one you would do well to avoid. Instead, make a list of short and long-term eating goals. Post them in the kitchen where you can see them whenever you go to get something to eat or prepare a meal for yourself and your family. Consult this list of goals when making your shopping list. And most importantly, don't beat yourself up over eating an occasional french fry or apple pie. Meditation brings emotional well-being and empowering you to communicate more effectively and confidently. By meditating to discover and be comfortable with the thoughts and desires of your true inner self, you will become more confident in expressing them to others, and your confidence naturally lends itself to speaking effectively. As a result, people will take you seriously. They respect your opinion and seek out your counsel, because they recognize you as being one who knows his or her mind, and as one who thinks rationally and is focused on the task at hand. The Summation of It All Meditation is often thought to be nothing more than a hippie sitting cross-legged making humming sounds with their eyes closed and their palms facing up toward the sky. Thankfully, nothing could be farther from the truth. Meditation is the practice of total relaxation and entering into a state of discovering an awareness of your inner self and subconscious thoughts, dreams, and ideas. Meditation equals focus, which equals success and happiness. The process of meditation happens when you put yourself in a place and position that allows you to submit to full and complete relaxation. The state of being in full and complete relaxation allows your body and mind to focus on who you really are and release physical and emotional tension that was standing in the way of letting your true self surface, live, and thrive. The process of meditation has no one definite means by which it happens, though. There are a number of ways to take you to a state of relaxation and focus. It is strongly suggested that you begin by spending time in solitude and quiet. Spending the time alone is pretty much a must, as to do otherwise would be too distractive and the interruptions would be there no matter how well you believed you could block them out. As for the quiet part, well, quiet is a relative term. To some, quiet is total silence. To others, quiet is music or nature sounds playing in the background. And yet to others, quiet is the sounds in the barn on a fishing pier or in a park. Once you have established your place of relaxation, you will need to follow the other musts of meditation that tells us to focus or fixate on a single object and recline or lie down in such a way that no part of your body is being prohibited from being fully extended. 
This position allows blood and oxygen to flow freely through the body as it should. Focusing on a single object forces you to clear your mind of everything else, even those things that aren't necessarily bad or damaging to think about. The reason for this is to train you to concentrate and look beyond the obvious. This happens when your focus turns to your imagination and visualization skills to discover your inner thoughts and feelings on literally any subject. Coming to terms with your true self enables you to make positive changes in your life which will allow you to live a life that is healthier, less stressful, more fulfilling professionally, sexually, personally, and emotionally. You are able to enjoy these benefits of meditation by using any or all of the tools available to you for getting the most out of your meditative practices. These include yoga, organic eating and living, journaling, brain exercises to enhance memory and powers of observation, goal setting and goal tracking to encourage and challenge you to stay on task, self-hypnosis, concentrating on being acutely aware of your surroundings, listening to your inner self, developing and using the skills to be a positive thinker rather than a negative one, sorting through the difference between reservations that are holding you back and reservations that are intuitive. Finally, it should be said that meditation has no age, socioeconomic, cultural, or gender boundaries. Anyone can meditate effectively and productively if they choose to do so. It just takes practice, time, 20 minutes or so each day, and commitment. Testimonials from those who embrace the practice of meditation. Meditation saved my life. I was an emotional wreck from everything life dumped on me in just a few short months. I knew the shortness of breath, sweats, lack of appetite, and sleepless nights were leading me nowhere good. When my sister-in-law, who always has it all together, suggested I try meditation, I wasn't sure I could or even wanted to. But I finally decided I had nothing to lose. Little did I know at the time that I had everything to gain from it. I wasn't able to salvage some parts of my life but I was able to come to terms with them and not let them break me. Today, I am happier than I ever thought I could be. Meditation has given me my life back. Priscilla I didn't set out to meditate. I just wanted to do yoga because it was a form of low-impact exercise that brought results. But when I got into it, I discovered the calm and lack of tension that came with the breathing and movements. This led me to start reading more about the history of yoga and its purpose. I have a healthy diet even though it isn't organic. I am a goal setter, but you won't find me writing down my thoughts and feelings on paper. I believe in looking for the good in everything and taking responsibility for your own thoughts and actions instead of looking for someone or something else to blame, and I take 30 minutes a day for myself to reflect, plan, hope, and dream about who I am and who I want to be. Gracie My best friend's fiancé is very focused in her meditation and suggested I try it when I was diagnosed with a blood disorder last year. At first I was skeptical and preferred to feel sorry for myself. But when she showed me that meditation was a way to rest and take control of my feelings about my condition instead of letting it get me down, I decided to give it a try. Now I spend 20 to 30 minutes a day focusing on what I have to be thankful for and how I can use my disease to educate others. Changing my diet to an organic one has given me more energy than I ever thought possible, and as a result of learning to breathe properly, I sleep better, am able to walk farther, and have more energy to do the things I enjoy that I can still do. Adam I have been teaching people meditation for nearly seven years. I have seen meditation change people's lives, and always for the better. I use meditation personally to stay focused on doing my best as a single mom and to deal with the repercussions of having an eating disorder as a teen and young adult. Christina My mother was a hypochondriac. I think she did it as a way to get my dad's attention. It didn't work. He walked out the door when I was nine and we never saw him again. Mom's obsession with being sick only got worse. Unfortunately, she found a doctor who was always willing to give her whatever she wanted. My sisters, brothers, and I buried her two weeks after my wedding. 
She died from complications of a surgical procedure she didn't even need. Over the years, she tried filling us kids with pills for this and that, vitamins for everything under the sun, and she dragged us to the doctor every time she thought we didn't look like we felt well or acted off, as she called it. The day of her funeral, I made the decision that I would never put another pill into my mouth unless there was absolutely no alternative treatment. Thankfully, my first real job was to develop a website and marketing materials for a fitness club and spa. I got to know some of the instructors, one in particular named Patricia. Patricia introduced me to meditation and I've been hooked ever since. Nearly 20 years later, I am a happy, healthy, confident wife, mom, and professional whose only regret is that my mom didn't meet someone like Patricia. Lana I am half Navajo. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents on the reservation until they passed away when I was in my early 20s. Their culture and customs include various forms of meditation, something I was exposed to at a very early age. I have always found it to be physically and emotionally healing to meditate. I don't understand why doctors don't use meditation as a form of treatment. It's been working for centuries, so you think they would see that and give their patients the option to do something that actually works. Lucinda Spending time every day dealing with the past and focusing on the future has been the most effective way for me to deal with my PTSD. I nearly died in an explosion during my third tour in Afghanistan. Thankfully, I still have all my limbs, but just because I look whole doesn't mean I am. Meditation allows me to forgive myself for not dying with my buddies, and to be thankful I'm alive and can experience life with my wife and boys. Hopefully, meditation will continue to help me get my life back to as normal as it can possibly be. Franklin I can't say I am hardcore into meditation. I'm more into Pilates than yoga, and I don't eat organic foods, but I do eat a diet free of fast food, sugar, and chemicals about 90% of the time. But I spend 15 to 20 minutes every day without fail, practicing proper breathing and meditating on who I want to become what my next step should be to reach the goals I've set for myself. I know some people wouldn't say that's true meditation, but I can say that since I've been doing this about two years, I sleep better, feel better, look better, and I don't get nearly as stressed or angry as I used to. When I think about it, I can't remember the last time I was actually angry. I just don't let things get to me the way I used to. I want to work up to being a little more committed to some of the meditation practices I've read about, because if what little I do has helped this much, I am excited to see what will happen when I step it up a notch or two. Karen My mom and aunts have been meditating for as long as I can remember. My brother and cousins and I used to make fun of them, but I guess it rubbed off on me without my even realizing it. I taught everyone on our high school football team how to breathe properly and have always eaten a natural and healthy diet and am concerned about using natural materials and products. I refuse to give up my six-mile walk every day and always go alone so that I can reflect, focus on my life, dream dreams, make goals, and fix what needs need to be fixed in my mind. Okay, so I guess you can call that meditation. You got me, Mom. Philip Meditation is simply my way of staying on track. I have a high-pressure job and a lot of people depend on me to get it right. I love what I do but if I didn't take the time to meditate, I would probably end up having a stroke. Meditation reminds me that my job is just that, a job. It isn't who I am, but what I do. Michael I meditate every day by journaling and reading books that encourage me to be positive and to enjoy being me. Stephanie My husband and I wanted to start a family, but nothing was happening. After a few months, we both received clean bills of health from our doctors. There was no medical reason for not getting pregnant. They told us to relax and let nature take its course and that we would have a baby. A few months more went by without my getting pregnant. I was desperate. It started to affect my marriage, which has been as strong and healthy as it could possibly be to that point. I was talking to my best friend about it, and she said she believed the doctor was right that we were simply trying too hard. She said she had read and heard of women being so stressed and tense that the negative energy prevented them from becoming pregnant. 
I just lost it and told her I would do anything it took to have a family. So she suggested I try meditation, or at least yoga and breathing exercises to relax me. She even said she would do it with me. I couldn't believe how much better I felt in just a matter of days. I was so relaxed, and for the first time in months, I felt like I was thinking and acting rationally. I even lost a few pounds, which made me feel sexier and more attractive. Well, you know where that led, and today I have a six-month-old little boy and am three months pregnant with our second baby. We couldn't be happier, and I meditate every single day. I am also sure that the yoga and meditation contributed greatly to the fact that my labor was short and easy, and I did it all on my own, no meds needed. Shannon Meditation changed my life. That's the only way to say it. Sabrina My cardiologist suggested I use meditation to combat the depression I experienced after having extensive heart surgery. It's a scientific fact that messing with the heart changes a person, and while I had read that that was possible, I never dreamed it would be such an issue after my surgery. Thankfully, I took his advice. It wasn't easy, and it certainly didn't happen overnight, but I can honestly say that meditation gives me the assurance that I am still me, even though the heart that beats inside me is almost entirely mechanical. Jan When our son committed suicide after his wife left him, I didn't think I would ever smile again. I wanted to shut my eyes and never leave my bed again. I wanted to die. My husband was hurting too, but I was too selfish to help him or let him help me. Then one day, after existing on nothing but coffee for several days, my heart started racing and I was unable to focus my eyes on anything. Everything was just a blur. For a split second, I was relieved thinking I was going to die. But just as quickly, I knew I wasn't ready to die. I love my husband and other children, and my grandchildren needed me to let them know what a great guy their dad really was. In that moment, I cried out to God to save me from myself. That very day, I started praying and meditating to become a vibrant, loving woman, the type of woman my family deserved. I took control of my body through clean eating and yoga and haven't looked back since. My heart still aches for my son but it is equally joyful over the fact that his little girls know him in such a way that they can be proud of him and know his actions were not out of rejection of them. Cecilia Common Terms Used in Meditation and Yoga Active Meditation A stage of meditation including intense physical exercise followed by a period of complete stillness and silence for the purpose of discovering what the subliminal inner self is feeling and thinking. Antara TMA, the inner self, particularly your heartfelt thoughts and desires. Aura, an energy field belonging to a living thing. A visible aura contains various colors and tells about the spiritual and emotional persona of the plant, human, or creature surrounded by it. An aura can be felt, heard, or sensed, but only by those trained to do so, or who have the natural ability. Banda, a muscle contraction used in yoga to change blood flow, nerve pressure, and the flow or distribution of spinal fluid. The purpose of Banda is to promote healing and energy. Kundalini, internal psychological energy that is housed at the base of the spine. The practice of meditation, especially meditation that includes specific yoga positions and breathing exercises, channels Kundalini energy throughout the body for the purpose of realizing your inner self. Chakras, the seven energy centers of the body. Each chakra responds to different colors, emotions, body functions, and surroundings. The chakras are located at the crown of the head, between the eyebrows, the base of the neck, the heart, the genital area, the rectal area, and behind the navel. Enlightenment, discovering the truth that resides within the inner self. Enlightenment happens through meditation. Guru, a spiritual leader who is believed to have a oneness or intimate connection with God for the purpose of leading others to God. Holistic, means to consider the entire body in a physical, emotional, and mental sense. Treating the body holistically means to consider body, soul, and mind when deciding upon treatment. 
japa, to repeat the name of God over and over for the purpose of recognizing God's holiness. Karma, the belief that one's position in life is the result of actions and thoughts in a previous life and that the thoughts and actions of this present life affects the next incarnation. Lotus Position Cross-legged yoga position used during meditation. Mantra Mystic word or phrase repeated over and over again during meditation. The purpose of bringing the meaning of the mantra to a state of reality. Example I will remain calm in all situations. Nadi Channels or streams in the body specifically nerve channels, the spinal cord, digestive tract, etc. Nadi Shodhana, a term used to describe clearing or cleansing the nadi. This is typically done by breathing through alternate nostrils. Namaste, a term used to greet and say goodbye, which expresses mutual respect for one another. It is usually accompanied by crossing the hands across the chest with the palms facing in. Nirvana, the state of ultimate bliss attained through meditation, specifically through the practice of yoga and by achieving moral discipline and clean living. Prana, the link between the spiritual self and the material in a person. Prana is also described as the energy force in life. Pranayama, Breathing Techniques Shidkari The act or exercise of breathing in through the lips with your tongue presenting just past the lips and exhaling through the nose. Doing so correctly will create a hissing sound. The purpose of Shidkari is to eliminate tiredness or fatigue, hunger and thirst. It is also credited with beauty and poise. Tandra the heightened state of awareness between sleeping and being awake experienced during meditation. Yantra, an object or symbol used to hold your attention during meditation. Zen, the belief that enlightenment is attained through meditation and self-discipline, not religious beliefs, faith, or devotion to God. If you enjoyed this book, then I'd like to ask you for a favor. Would you be kind enough to leave a review for this book on Amazon? It'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you and good luck.